Hello, this is my 2004 Ford Mustang SVT Cobra. This is screaming yellow. It's uh, one of 299 made in this color as a hardtop for 04. 03 was zinc yellow, so uh, this color is only found on the 2004s. And uh, I've been reading the book Iron Fist, Lead Foot. It talks about the development of the Cobra, um, about John Coletti. And uh, there's just a few things that I wanted to share. You know, I don't want to take it away from the author or anything, but just some of the things that I wanted to point out that I thought were really cool or um, cosmetically, I guess we'll, we'll talk about the, the front bumper, how the 99 had a, kind of an arch in the middle. And the designer didn't like that even when, he, when it came out, and so he had the chance to redesign it for 03 and 04, and so you can see it's flat on the bottom and it has a bigger um, area in the center to accommodate a heat exchanger and if you look at the fog lights you have your fog light and then you have an open spot and everybody wonders what that's all about and some people think it's for another fog light or for the intake but what it actually is is it's for ducts for the brakes for cooling and that was inspired by the Ford GT Uh, the the hood as well has heat extractors that were also inspired by the Ford GT and they started out near the windshield in the design and then halfway down the hood and where they ended up now is um, where they came out best in the wind tunnel. The windshield wipers also have a kind of a, a wing on them to help them from flapping around at higher speeds. And uh, the Cobra in general, you can see it has painted side mirrors that fold in. It has different side skirts that are flat compared to a GT. And the um, side scoops is something that a lot of people overlook, but they are actually different as well. They have horizontal lines through them here instead of the honeycomb. So that's uh, a few of the special things. The rear wing was also designed in the, wi the wind tunnel with a NASCAR emphasis and it ended up being one inch taller than they initially designed because that's what the wind tunnel was showing them they needed to do. Uh, the rear bumper, of course, it's more aggressive. Bigger Cobra letters in the back. You got the big black valence too, so that's uh, a lot of people like that too. And I really like that. Then the uh, third brake light is all LEDs. Uh, even the windshield wipers are different. Uh, mine are off of the car right now. I never drive it in the rain anyway, but as you can see here on the bottom there's this fat lip that goes along the bottom and that's actually been proven in a, a wind tunnel to keep these things planted instead of shaking around so that's kinda neat one thing I did want to mention about the wheels is that they're one inch wider so they could fit a 275 tire on them and um, SVT went to the Ford designers and said uh, to fit that size wheel in width on this car we actually need to cut into part of the frame of the car so it was the first time that they had done that where they made a change on all of the 2003 and 2004 cars uh, to accommodate something different for the Cobra so I thought that was pretty neat that they uh, you know they actually dug out a, a piece of the subframe so that you could fit a wider tire on it so I mean there's a lot of things that they they did like that. Um, small changes, a lot of things that took a lot of development. Uh, something I thought was pretty cool as well, when you turn the key, you'll see a shift light come up. 
and you wonder what what that was for and uh, that was for a fuel economy thing to get away from the gas guzzler tax. The steering wheel says Cobra on it. So that's different. You also get a, a boost gauge on the uh, on the instrument panel. It replaces the battery. You don't have a battery gauge. Uh, the seats are custom. They have the snake in the middle. The bigger IUP headrest and uh, suede. The only way you could get leather in a Mustang Cobra like this is if you get the 10th anniversary or the Mystic Chrome. Um, has the white face gauges which were similar than the Cobras but these are kind of an indiglow color. T56 6 speed. You know they had to redesign a lot of things. Even the IRS is different than that on the 99 and the 01 Cobra. It has the 31 spline shafts and it's been uh, redone a little bit but the book's really cool it talks about how the heavier engine threw them off because they had to now redo the whole spring rates and everything to hold a heavier engine and I mean a lot of the things that they had just finished for the O2 Cobra they concept they had to redesign and uh, they were able to get it out on time it was a it was a very cool project when you read about it uh, John Coletti was driving the O2 concept when it he had a SVT focus behind him and he didn't disclose what had been done to that focus but he said it was pretty hard to shake and on the straightaways you'd get away from it but then you know it was like a little mosquito or a fly flying around his head and he kept trying to swat it away and it wouldn't go so that's when he put the brakes on and said we're not doing an O2 Cobra we're gonna supercharge this one and put it out in O3 and everybody thought he was crazy and but he told them that they couldn't do that because they already canceled the 2000 Cobra from the power issues it had in 99 and so um, in the end though it was it was well worth it people went without a Cobra for 2000 except for the Cobra R different story but um, you know that it was really hard to tell all of the dealerships who were SVT certified that you're not gonna have a car this year but you're gonna have a really good one next year so um, but it worked out really well. These, they codenamed the project Terminator because they just wanted to have it finally be end of story. You know, no more competition between the Camaro and everything, which sadly went away in 2002 anyway. But then it came back, so I guess we're all good there. But uh, anyway, that's just a few points that I enjoyed from the book. There's plenty more, and, and uh, I'd recommend you go read it because it'll really open your eyes of how special these cars were. I mean, it talks about the seats and how, you know, when you go to a manufacturer and you tell them you want them to build you seats, they want a hundred thousand units. And so here you had the Cobra coming out with, you know, far less than that. And, you know, so there were challenges there. The, the engine is probably the best part of the whole story where it talks about how, you know, when they went to supercharge it, at first the designers didn't like the idea at all. And then they came back to Coletti and said, no, we want you to put the Eaton M112 on it, the bigger supercharger than the, that they were anticipating. So with that, they blew multiple engines up on the dyno from connecting rod failures. And uh, that's when the car really got it. its uh, strong engine under development. They went with the iron block, 8.5 compression ratio, so it was safer under boost. And Ford didn't have um, connecting rods that were capable of that kind of power at the time. They had some that they were developing, but uh, so they had to turn to Manly rods. And where Ford's rods were six dollars a piece, Manly needed fifty-six dollars per rod. So you can see that huge boost, you know, and that it took to in price alone just to change it over. But uh, overall, I love the car. Haven't had a single issue with it. And uh, it's everything that everybody loves about the Terminator.